Thank you for joining us today to pay tribute to Dr. Willis. I know that his colleagues and I are all honored to be a part of this moment. My last conversation with Dr. Willis was just two days before he passed. In his typical way, he was optimistic and looking forward to returning to work. Over my four years at Converse, Dr. Willis would periodically take me aside and warn me that I needed to consider a replacement for his position because he couldn't serve as archivist forever. Each time I acknowledged that at some point he would probably like to retire, but the job was his for as long as he wanted it. He would nod and say that he wasn't quite ready to retire, but he would let me know when he was. One of my best memories of Converse will always be the two-hour tour of the archives with Dr. Willis, as he showed me his favorite pieces and artifacts while telling me stories of Converse's history. As I met with alumni over the years, I often was asked if Dr. Willis was still at Converse. When I'd say yes, they would smile and with a wistful tone in their voice, tell me how much they loved and admired him. Every once in a while, I would be the lucky recipient of a Dr. Willis story where the alumna told me an anecdote of a time when Dr. Willis let his gentlemanly veneer slip for a second to the surprise and delight of his students. When Dr. Willis would attend reunion weekend and host a talk on the history of Converse, I loved attending to learn from him, but I also loved watching the face of the alumni. They looked up at him with awe and rapt attention. It was like they had time traveled back to the days when they were in his classroom and they were once again sitting at the feet of the master. They smiled as he highlighted memories they shared, laughed as he reminded them of the rules they hated that now seem so archaic, and sometimes got a bit teary as he discussed the traditions they still hold so dear. It was clear that Dr. Willis had become one of those beloved traditions over the years, and they relished the chance to share a moment back in his class. When Converse moved to remote learning in mid-March, the campus was often eerily quiet. During those months, it often seemed like I was the only person on campus, along with campus safety, housekeepers, and facilities. But every time I went into the library, I would find Dr. Willis working away and always fully dressed in a suit and bow tie. In my time at Converse, I can say that I came to treasure Dr. Willis's knowledge. For almost any question I had, Dr. Willis knew the answer and would expand upon it to make sure I had the full context. His ability to recall details and dates was astounding and never wavered. Dr. Willis was a consummate gentleman and scholar. Few colleges are lucky enough to have had someone like Dr. Willis on their faculty in their history, and Converse was truly blessed that Dr. Willis called Converse his home and us his family for 53 years. Thank you, Dr. Willis. It was an honor. Dr. Jeffrey R. Willis, Jr., the Andrew Helmus Distinguished Professor of History Emeritus, was one of the most respected and beloved members of the Converse faculty, serving Converse as a full-time member of the faculty from 1967 to 2005. That's longer than some of our faculty and most of our students have lived. During that time, he made a lasting impact on the lives of generations of Converse students. His fan club includes so many alumni and many of their alumni daughters as well, as well as nearly every Converse faculty member of the last 60 years. After he retired from full-time teaching, he continued to teach on occasion, including in a study travel course in January 2007, when he took students to England. After all these years, 
I don't think I'm violating confidentiality by including an excerpt from my letter to Dr. Willis regarding that 2007 course. I wrote, I read each of your evaluations and found them to be excellent. In fact, if you will excuse the pun, they are sterling. Thank you for your continuing contribution to Converse. I must agree with the student who wrote that we lost one of our best faculty members when you retired. Fortunately for us, you have retired, but not faded away. And he did not fade away. He continued to contribute to Converse as director of the Converse archives, where he earned the reputation of knowing everything there was to know about Converse and Spartanburg as well. I spent many happy hours in the archives with Dr. Willis, asking him questions. Not once was I able to stump him. Not only did he know the answers, he knew the answers to the 10 other questions that my question raised in his mind and that I had never considered. In his usual and very organized way, each of my visits to the archives would include a tour of the storerooms and a discussion of his latest project. He knew every object, every document in the archive, but not just as an entry or a record. He knew each holding's connection to persons, living and dead, and what those persons meant to our college. In 2017, Converse honored Dr. Willis, celebrating 50 years of his service to the college. I recall well his comment to me after the ceremony. He just did not understand what all the fuss was about. He liked the Converse chair, though. It was presented to him on stage at Twitchell, and he was happy to sit in it and relax. Dr. Willis was a model teacher, a scholar whose elegant style graces numerous publications. And above all, he was a gentleman. We were so fortunate to enjoy his long and gracious presence at our college. My uh, graduate school advisor once remarked, if you want to be remembered as a teacher, accent your eccentricities. Those will be invoked long after anything you've said has disappeared from memory. Jeff Willis, unconsciously and purposefully, was the exemplar of that philosophy. Jeff Willis would not have been himself if he had not been himself. He was a shy, quiet, private man who became his best self in the public arena of the classroom. As a teacher, Jeff was a storyteller. And I will relate just a tidbit of my favorite stories from 43 years of association with him. I met him for the first time in 1976 when I came from Europe for an on-campus interview. I discerned very quickly that he was a man of disciplined manner and firm beliefs. Change was not his forte. I first experienced that when he wrote me in Europe to inform me that my textbook uh, in History 100 would be, and I don't remember what it was, I wrote back, I do not use textbooks. He sent back a rather terse response, we do, I will order it for you. That was Jeff Willis. Timing is everything for a superstar lecturer. Jeff had an uncanny ability. Back when Bell started an in class, he walked into the classroom just as the bell pealed and he ended his lecture precisely a second before the bell rang at the end of class. He possessed a rare wit and his humor was subtle, slipped in lectures in ways that often went over people's heads until a few minutes later when it dawned on them just what he had, just what he had said. Jeff did not like disturbing the order of the desk in the classroom. Um, he would have done well in the social distance classroom. If a student moved a desk, Jeff looked at her disapprovingly. 
Students tried to disrupt Jeff's routine by various actions, such as turning the chairs to the back of the room, or sitting on the floor instead of on, uh, on the desk, at the desks, or other tricks. Jeff was unflappable, but he was not about to concede. When students realized that they were not achieving their goal uh, and tried to readjust, he laconically remarked, you have made your choice and now you must abide by it. Um, one did not come late to Jeff's class. Um, once students hid in the hall and did not enter the classroom, another attempt to disrupt. Jeff walked in, shut the door, locked it, I believe there were locks at the time, but he certainly shut it and closed it, and proceeded to just begin the lecture to an empty classroom. And he lectured for an hour. Uh, and he remarked loud enough so he could be heard that um, this material would be on the exam the next class session. Uh, students begin to, uh, this is not good, and uh, tried to enter the classroom. Jeff said, he would not open. No. Yeah, again, you have made your decision, you will live by it. I remember coming out of my office, it was quite a sight. The students were lying on the floor, trying to listen under the door, taking notes, leaning on the horn, taking notes, because they knew he wasn't kidding. That material would be on the exam the next day. When we first came to Spartanburg in 1976, my wife and I resided in Jeff's house on Clinton Avenue. Uh, while he was in London for the fall term. But the house's most prominent feature was the hundreds of painted lead toy soldiers, which was Jeff's primary hobby. They were everywhere, laid out in battles with labels. Uh, later, when Jeff moved to a large old farmhouse on Washington Road, he had a vast amount of space for his soldiers, and they were literally all over the house, laid out in European war scenes. Another hobby was collecting local historical postcards. Uh, late in his career, Jeff published a postcard history of Spartanburg, followed with pictorial histories of Greenville and Converse College. Jeff never envisioned himself as a publishing scholar, but his pictorial histories are valuable resources. And he also edited a couple of newsletters on Spartanburg and Greenville history. The Converse archives was a fitting domain for Jeff's final years. He was a storyteller and a keeper of stories. He enthralled alums at Alumni Weekend and other venues with his tales of residents, ghosts and buildings, of legends, of folklore. We could virtually fill the archive space with stories by and about him. I saw Jeff less than two weeks before he died. I often dropped by the archives when I was in the library to say hello. And on that final occasion, he was napping, in coat and tie, of course. Jeff never was without coat and tie, uh, on the couch in the coca room. He said that he was not feeling particularly well, and he reported he did not think he could continue in the archives much longer. Now, there had been some talk about me possibly working in the archives. He asked, are you interested in the job? I said, not yet. And he responded, I hope this, this position continues. That was the last I saw him. But I agree. Jeff not only presided over our history, he was our history. Institutions have legends. Jeff Willis will remain one. History is not what you thought, it's what you remember. So said historians W.C. Seller and R.J. Yateman. According to Henry Ford, history is bunk. Voltaire goes so far as to suggest that history is nothing but a pack of tricks we play on the dead. Jane Austen, a famous English author, lamented that history is something I cannot be interested in. The men are all so good for nothing and hardly any women at all. Things have changed a little bit since her day. It's so very tiresome, she said. 
However, I prefer the wisdom of the great historian Arnold Toynbee, who declared, history not used is nothing, for all intellectual life is action, like practical life. And if you don't use the stuff well, it might as well be dead. I can assure you that professor of history, Jeff Willis, not only knew history well, but also used it very well. He taught courses that students remembered long after they graduated. He wrote books, articles, and monographs, including a postcard history of Spartanburg and a pictorial history of Converse College. He wanted people to be able to see history. He is one of our first professors ever to incorporate PowerPoint into his lectures so that students could see as well as hear what he had to say. Beyond such normal activities for a Converse professor as teaching and writing, he took on some special projects that confirms the Toynbee idea that we should use history well, like co-founding the London Term Abroad, and then later also taking groups of alumni and others to visit the many historical treasures of England and that entire area. Indeed, my wife and I, Nan, also joined two of those trips, one to London and one to uh, Dublin, and very much enjoyed his uh, wise uh, commentary on all the things we were able to see and experience as we got to live some of that history as well. <clears throat> he was editor of the papers and procedures of the Greenville County Historical Society, wrote for Hub City Writers Project, gave many talks on upstate history to local civic groups, and he retired in 2005, but he could never retire, and then took over as Converse archivist in the library. He reviewed, excuse me, he received the South Carolina Governor's Award in the humanities in 2007 after he had retired. Oh, history well used indeed, my friend. Professor Jeff Willis is a difficult person to forget, indeed impossible. He was one of the first faculty members I met and worked with when I came to Converse in 1971. He was chair of the history department then, and I was chair of the education department and director of the MAT program. He was also advisor to the history and social studies majors in the MAT program for prospective teachers. So we were colleagues, and I benefited greatly from his example and his counsel. Undergraduate and graduate students alike admired his calm demeanor his wit, his sometimes quirky mannerisms, telling me on occasion that they thought he was the converse Mr. Chips or even Ichabod Crane. This was before Yoda of Star Wars fame or Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter novels, but they might also come to mind as one reflects on wise and interesting mentors and professors like Jeff Willis. Students who studied with him in his British history courses and even went with him and other faculty like uh, Tom Rees on the travel study programs in England found his detailed knowledge of English historical sites and events amazing and unforgettable. <clears throat> he had so many interesting stories to share about the lives of ancient royalty, bringing dry historical facts to life. Yes, for him, history was a living discipline. In his later years as archivist 
in the Congress Library. He excelled and even added his own scholarly work to our collection with his postcard history and pictorial history of Converse College and other institutional documents of historical value. He was perfect for that job, which he carried on with joy long after he retired from full-time teaching, providing ready assistance and important resources to faculty, administrators, and students, including yours truly. Once in one of our many lunch lunchtime discussions in our college dining hall, I asked him why on a Friday he was in a suit and tie. Since faculty always honored casual Friday customs and indeed carried such informality into other days of the week, it's rare to see a faculty man wearing a tie these days. He declared that he was a rebel and defied such modern inventions as casual Friday. I am sure he always defied casual Friday in his good-humored, quote, rebellion, end quote, even when he was in his final years at Converse, as I never saw him without his, quote, rebel, end quote, outfit. Well, except when I visited him in the hospital after he fell off a ladder while working on cleaning his gutters. I was dean at the time and gave him my good deanly advice. I said, Jeff, don't do that again. Others will be sharing even more memories of this remarkable, distinguished professor of history, one of the finest examples of faculty excellence serving Converse College, his academic home, for so many years. He knew how to teach history. He was part of our important institutional history. Rest in peace, my colleague and friend. You have defined college teaching at its best. <laughs>